Hello, dear friends, dear sisters and brethren. Just recently, I was asked to help you out in regard to New Start Healthy Living. My name is Angela Jens. My husband and me, we are living in Denmark. We are Germans. Denmark is north of Germany in the midst of Europe. And this evening, I want to talk about health. And before I begin, I want to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you very much for your loving kindness. I thank you that I'm able to share the good news with these nice people in Pakistan. I ask you, give us your Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. Let us do your will and be kind to one another. And let us learn more about how to become healthy, how to keep healthy, how to help other people being healthy or becoming healthy. This I pray in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I will share my screen. There are some noises in the background. I'm sorry, uh, but it will soon be over. Do this one. Daniel's health, new start. I, I have to wait a bit. Daniel's health, new start. Some slides are from Ella Chitati. He is a Bible teacher. He's living in Zimbabwe. And he knows his Bible very, very well. And we all should do it in this way. But we have prayed. And I greet you, and I feel very humbled to be able to present this before you. Thank you very much. Who was Daniel? Daniel was a prophet, not like Isaiah or Jeremiah. He was a young man. He came from a rich, upper-class Jewish family living in Palestine around 622 before Christ. He spent his childhood in Judea or the kingdom of Judah. Some assume that he was one member of the royal family. And Israel tried several times to ally with Egypt and other countries to get protection from them. They did not rely anymore on God, and this was a very, very sad story. Jeremiah and Isaiah and others they were admonishing Israel to go back or come back to the Lord, but they did not listen to it. What did they do? They were um, worshipping idols. You can see it here on this slide. It was not nice, and this made our dear Lord Jesus very sad and angry. And at last, after many warnings, what happened there? We know the story. Jerusalem was besieged. Babylonian army came to capture Israel, to burn the temple, to burn Jerusalem, to destroy it. And Daniel and his friends, they were allowed to come back, together with them to, um, to Babylon, but, but many other Israelites were killed. And they had to walk a long way. The Lord gave Jehoiakim into the hands of Babylon. This we can read in Daniel 1, 1 and 2. Wait a moment, please. Just try to find the scripture. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. You see the desecration. What the priests did in the temple that they were worshipping idols, now the enemies came and took the golden holy vessels from the temple and put it into the house of their gods, their idols. It was so sad.
Let's to look. Daniel on the way to Babylon. Daniel and his friend had to go from Jerusalem to Babylon, which is about 1,500 kilometers, a bit more than 1,000 miles distance. This took about two months' walk. It was very hard, and I think many of the Israelites died on the way from Jerusalem to Babylon. You can see here a picture how it might have been, and for sure they were thirsty and hungry and were not treated good. And they went into captivity, the first captivity, you can read it here. And the book of Daniel reveals that there is a great controversy going on between Christ and Satan. And the king, he was looking for young people to help him in his reign. Therefore, he was looking for young people who were fair, who were smart, intelligent, looking very nice, handsome, young men from a good Israel, Israel, uh, Israelitic families to do his biddings and uh, his orders. And they needed something which is also necessary today, uh, studies. They were allowed to study at uh, the schools of the Babylonians. They had to study literature. They had to study and learn the language. And they were educated in all their sciences they knew at that time. But there happened one thing more. They changed their names. And this is very confusing. Hanania, God has favored, got the name Shadra, royal the scribe. Daniel, God is judge, got a new name, Belshazzar, lord of the straightened treasure. treasure. Mishael, who is what God is, became to Meshach, guest of a king. And Isaiah, Jehovah has helped, he was named Abednego, servant of Nebo. This was done to confuse their minds and their uh, Jewish identity because they were uh, praying to our dear Lord Jesus Christ, to the living God of heaven and earth. What is happening here? You see, these young people, they are very astonished about the food they should eat. Why that? Arriving at the college, the young man discovered that they were honored to eat the king's food from the king's table. This was very honorable, and the king was very modern in this way. It was rich food, but it was not the right one for the Jewish ones. It was not healthy, and contrary to the rules in Deuteronomy 14. Much of it also was offered to Babylonian gods. If they would eat it, it would be a kind of communion service with false goods. But what did Daniel do? Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And the eunuch, eunuch he, was, he liked Daniel very much and the other three friends of Daniel. And he was listening to him, but it was very dangerous. If the king Nebuchadnezzar didn't like that what Daniel proposed, his life was also threatened. Daniel refused the king's food because of the violation of the scriptures to eat unclean foods. Leviticus 11, I'm thinking of the pig meat and other meats and flesh, which are not clean after this uh, chapter of the Bible. It was improperly slaughtered. The Jews had a special form to slaughter the animal that the blood ran out of the body. It was hanging and the blood came down. And it was sacrificed to heathen gods. They would participate in their belief, and this they did, did want to. They wanted to stay firm. We must stand for something, otherwise sooner or later we will fall for anything. And this is true. 
Kindly be courageous, be like Daniel, because we are living in times where we need to be Daniels. And Daniel's purpose was, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Pulse is vegetables and uh, fruit. At the end of the ten days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's rich food. So the stewards took away the rich food and the wine they were to drink and gave them pulse, vegetables. But this was not the end. At the end, the king examined these young boys. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found nine, none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Isaiah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And then it continued even unto the first year of King Pyrrhus. You know, when we are honoring the Lord, he will honor us. These young people were ten times better in eternal intelligence and knowledge than all the um, magicians and astrologers, or, and I don't know what, who were at the court of Nebuchadnezzar. This is because they were living rightly. Therefore, the um, lifestyle of Daniel is very interesting for us. And how can that be? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? In, in the first chapters of the Bible, you can see the original diet which is good for human mankind. New start. I don't know if you can see it here. It is a bit small. We try to make it a bit bigger. It is every letter of New Start stands for one word. Nutrition, N, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and the most important of it is trust in God. But there is nothing new under the sun. Why do we need new starch? Why I am showing this picture of such an Egyptian mummy? Because... Scientists found out that old Egyptian mummies show interesting similarities to our modern lifestyle today. Many of these rich and wealthy men suffered from heart disease and arteriosclerosis and much more. There is nothing new under the sun. How can we prevent possible diseases? If the old Egyptians, if they had the same lifestyle, issues and sicknesses as we have or diseases, what can we do to prevent it? Prevention is better than cure. And I know when I got to marry my husband, he was very allergic and I was thinking, no, no, I don't like this. I don't want to have my children so sick. And I was thinking, what can I do? And I had a good girlfriend, an Adventist lady, and she told me what to do. And I was very thankful about it. And it, you can find all these good advices in the Bible and in other good books. For example, um, Ministry of Healing from Ellen G. White. Can you read this book? It will help you. And it helped also my husband that I tried to uh, give uh, proper healthy food to him and our children because then we had it much better. Prevention is better than cure. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. It is the Lord who is healing us. No other. It is only the Lord because he has made us. He loves you and me. And if something is wrong, he can help us. But often it is because we are not living rightly according to his commandments and his statutes. Therefore, it is important to get to know the rules 
and uh, the things how to be or become healthy. The laws of health. This is in the book Ministry of Healing, page 127. Pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness or temperance, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. These are heaven's appointed remedies, and they are much better than every medicine in the world. Surely, sometimes it is necessary, for example, if, when there is an emergency or something like this, but normally we don't need it. Fresh air. And God, God called the firmament heaven. This is the air. The most essential element to sustain life is oxygen. Without food, you will die in a few weeks. Without water, you will die in a few days. Without air, you will die in a few minutes. Blood and cells are dependent upon oxygen. But I will, would like to concentrate now today on nutrition because it's the first letter of this new start work. Plant food advantages. No cholesterol, high in fiber, moderate in calories, rich in phytochemicals. What do these things do? Fiber reduces the risk of heart disease and also high blood pressure. Colon and rectal cancer, diverticular disease, this is a heart disease, hemorrhage and obesity and much more. And fiber is like sweeping the floor in your kitchen when you have cooked something. The fiber is sweeping the colon, that all the bad stuff is coming out of it. Nutrition tips. Eat more fruits and vegetables daily. Eat more whole grains and nuts, and I mean not white grain, but whole grains. It means that it's a bit more brown. Brown rice, brown bread, brown noodles, and I don't know what you are eating there where you are living, but kindly have a look for those things. Eat more fiber and less refined foods, for example, in cakes. There you can find the white um, flour, which is not good. Make breakfast your biggest meal that you are eating in the morning like a king or queen. Can you think about it? It's so wonderful. It's a little crowd. Lunch like a prince or princess and supper like a pauper or like a poor person. Grains, fruits, nuts and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. You see, you can find it in the Bible. Grains, fruits, nuts and vegetables. The first three in the creation story and the last one after the flood. Eliminate all flesh food. Why? Because today the animals are very sick. Also fish, the contamination or pollution of um, the oceans is too big and too heavy that you could eat some fish. Eliminate all flesh food. Chicken, turkey, fish, shrimp, Lobster, crab, conch, lamb, beef, and their byproducts, byproducts like milk, cheese, eggs, butter, ice cream, sausages from your diet. Meats are high in sodium, contain hypoxanthin, which is a stimulator like caffeine, and increases cholesterol, which narrows or clogs the arteries, thus increasing the blood pressure, pain in the limbs, or vision problems. You see, it increases cholesterol, and this makes that the people are getting blood clots, and they are getting arterial clothes like the old Egyptians, and there are more lifestyle diseases, but uh, I don't have so much time. Nutrition tips. Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. You see? Eliminate all dairy foods. 
Use milk drinks from plant-based by plant-based sources such as almonds, cashews, rice, and so on. If you need some recipe, kindly let me know. Avoid the use of stimulating substances such as tea, coffee, chocolate, cacao, tobacco, and um, other things like alcohol or other drugs which are harmful for our body. Why? As these will elevate the blood pressure. Avoid the use of all energy drinks such as Red Bull, Rockstar, and Monster as they contain large doses of caffeine and other stimulants, thus increasing your heart rate. And this leads also to higher blood pressure. What can we do? We can eat whole grain and this makes the blood sugar more, more stable and you won't have so many swings of the blood sugar. Avoid the use of condiments as part of your diet. Any food with vinegar, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, barbecue sauces, veggie mayonnaise, salad dressings, pickles, and so on. And spices like um, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, curry, hot sauces, cayenne peppers, black and white pe peppers, and so on. Some of these spices may be used for medicinal value, but do not as a part of your diet. It is not good because it would pollute your blood. Most oil grains. <clears throat> Oats, rice, barley, millet, corn, wheat germ. On low heat for at least three hours at 170 degrees Celsius and turn it every 20 to 30 minutes. You can also use a slow cooker or cooking it on a low temperature for some hours. It will help you to um, that the body is able to get the nutrients out of uh, these grains. They are after storing container for later use when it will be cooked in the usual way. This prevents the intake of phytic acid and other toxins on the hull or husk of the grain which interferes with the body's absorption of nutrients such as copper, zinc, calcium, iron, magnesium, and the enzymes for digesting protein and starches. It will make the digestion easier when we are cooking the grains for a long time. I don't know, I have to go back. Use nuts, seeds, peas, all forms of beans and whole grains. The body converts the amino acid in these foods called LRG9 into a nitro oxide, which relaxes the blood vessels. You see, nuts and seeds. <clears throat> and when you're eating peas and all forms and beans together with whole grain, you will have a better protein than meat, like chicken, turkey, and I don't know what they're for. Avoid highly processed foods, which is unnatural. I'm thinking on cakes and biscuits and everything which is produced. It also contains a lot of extra chemicals, which are not good for the body. Use whole foods. Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. I am repeating it because it is important. I have to go down a bit more. Oh. Eliminate fried food from the diet and all free oils should be avoided while cooking. Where needed, preferable oils are extra virgin cold pressed olive oil and coconut oil. Fats. <clears throat> Avocado, coconut, and nuts are high in fat and should be used moderately as consuming too much of these item, items will overwork the liver, increase the cholesterol, and interfere with blood circulation. That means when you have eaten your food, only a little handful of nuts after every meal. And this fat 
it will coat, make a coating around your food that the liver has difficulties to digest it, therefore not too much of the fats. Eat three to five servings of fruit and vegetables daily. Do not mix fruits and vegetables at the same meal. This can cause digestive problems, as you know, a lot of air in the colon. Eat fruits at one meal and vegetables at another. Do not eliminate salt, but use the right kind of salt as it will help with improved results in maintaining a healthy body. An all-natural sea salt also supports the adrenals, which regulates blood pressure. Very important. Use sea salt with iodine, such as pink Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt, which has 84 essential trace elements, including iodine, iron, calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Avoid the use of soda or baking powder, as it is harmful and unnecessary to the body. It keeps the pH in the stomach high, thereby causing low stomach acid, which interferes with the digestion of protein. That means it will take much longer time to di digest protein. Eliminate all sugar, crystallized sugar, splenda, sweet and low, equal, or additional artificial flavors, sweeteners, and colors. Use instead of it natural sweeteners like honey, dates, raisins, and fruits, but not so much. Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. It seems strange to you. I had also first to get used to it because I loved my flesh my meat and the sauces and so on. Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Nutrition tips. Always use fats at the end of the meal, such as a handful of nuts, walnuts, cashew, or almonds. <clears throat> almonds. A slice or two of bread with natural nut butter or a piece of coconut. And treat your labels carefully to prevent the use of items which you, which you would want to avoid, the extra things, um, citronic acid or other elements which are not good for the body. Here comes um, an advice, counsels on diet and foods. The science of cooking is not a small matter. The skillful preparation of food is one of the most essential arts. It should be regarded as among the most valuable of all the arts because it is so closely connected with the life. Both physical and mental strength depend to a great degree upon the food we eat. Therefore, the one who prepares the food occupies an important and elevated position. And in um, medical missionary institutions, the cook has a crucial role, kindly believe me, and also in the homes. Kindly marry a wife or woman who is a really good cook. Or learn to cook, I think. Effect upon influence and usefulness. This is in regard to a future <clears throat> pastors and leaders of our churches. It's important. I found it this morning that I think I should Included. What a pity it is that often when the greatest self denial should be exercised, the stomach is crowded with a mass of unhealthful food which lies there to decompose. The affliction of the stomach affects the brain. The imprudent eater does not realize that he is disqualifying himself for giving wise counsel, disqualifying himself for laying plans for the best advancement of the work of God. But it is so. He cannot discern spiritual things, and in council meetings, when he should say yea and amen, he says nay. He makes propositions that are wide of the mark. The food he has eaten has benumbed his brain power. Therefore, it is very, really important to eat uh, temperate food. So not too much and not too less. Self-indulgence debars the human agents from witnessing for the truth. 
The gratitude we offer to God for his blessings is greatly affected by the food placed in the stomach. Indulgence of appetite is the cause of dissension, strife, discord, and many other evils. Impatient words are spoken and unkind deeds are done. Dishonored, dishonest practices are followed and passion is manifested and all because of the nerves of the brain are diseased by the abuse heaped upon the stomach. This was really new to me and I think I have read it before. Because of our love for eating and I like also very much to eat, there is strife, dissension, discord, and we are not able to discern the holy from the unholy and to make right decisions. Therefore, the brain is the only, what shall I say, um, communication channel with our dear Lord Jesus. Let's keep this clear, not overeating and living healthy lives to the glory of God. A moment. Does not work here. Don't come further on. The Bible says, therefore I'm saying this. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Why is it in this way? <laughs> Why are we like a temple? Uh, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I will show it to you. Look here. My husband bought me some roses. They're happy about it and glad. And the roses need some waters. And I put the roses into a vessel, you can see. You see a little bit of water. When we are living rightfully, the Lord can use us much better and much more effective because we are not using the Lord, but the Lord is using us. And when we are doing his biddings and living after his uh, statutes and commandments, he's able to give us not only so much of the Holy Spirit. You see, you see the water here? but he can fill it up and it can flow over to other people. You see? This is the intention of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, that we will have a life, an abundant life, to the glory of him. And so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your loving kindness. For your patience with me, you know I am not perfect. Nobody is perfect. I ask you, give us the willingness to do your will. Help us that we are opening our hearts for you and your Holy Spirit, that you may dwell in our hearts like vessels, like these roses in this glass vessel. And that you can fill us with your Holy Spirit, that our vessels, our body will live and we will live to your glory only. And that many people, many persons in this world will get to know you and come to the truth and to believe in you. Let us be like Daniel who purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with this or that or with overeating or other things. I thank you for this and I will praise you for this. And this I pray in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Next time I will speak about exercise, the E of new start. Until then, have a blessed time. Bye-bye. Greetings from Denmark.